Hey, all, welcome to my channel. Um, I should preface by saying, first and foremost, I have not read any of the books, uh, the Chinese version or the translated version, nor have I seen the original releases of the Chinese uh, adaptation of the books. But I have seen the first season, of course, of uh, Three Body Problem on Netflix. Uh, it was an interesting concept. I liked it um, to the point where, um, like I said, it had an interesting, interesting concept as far as an alien race having an issue, knowing full well that they can't solve it, and they know another planet has the capability of supporting their life. Um, the question is, is do they want to coexist with... Um, the inhabitants of Earth, or do they want to wipe them out or take them over, basically, whatever it may be. Now, of course, I haven't read the books, as I said, so uh, I wish I should... I'll probably have to read the books just to understand a little bit more. I may watch the Chinese versions of the series. Um, but um, there was one thing, though, that was very interesting, to say the least, uh, which was that the... The character, uh, paid, uh, played by Liam Cunningham, um, Thomas Wade, it brought up an interesting concept of if, biologically speaking, it were to work, you were to essentially cryogenically freeze a body for, tw for 12 months, for one year, basically, but every year, you'd wake that person up for one month and then bring him back, you know, cryogenically freeze him again so that as each year goes, you would just basically wake him up each year for one month, catch him up to, you know, get him up to speed with everything so long as he's not, you know, uh, falling behind with anything. Um, to the point where, realistically speaking, like, if, let's say, you were 20 or 21, and you went into this, you were cryogenically frozen, but of course woken up every year for one month, meaning that your body would have, let's say, for 12 months, uh, your body would have aged for 12 months, but realistically speaking, you would have aged, but realistically 12 years would have gone by. So you would have just aged a year versus the 12 years. Um, prolonging your life and such. But, of course, it comes to the point of, let's not forget that, uh, biologically and chemically speaking, cryogenically freezing and then unfreezing or thawing out the body and then going through that whole process over again uh, repetitively probably does not do good for the body itself, basically. And there does, unless there's some way to maintain it for whatever reason um, with uh, the cells that you're freezing and the tissues that you're freezing that it's it let's put it this way that you know you don't take something you know like whether it be some meat protein uh, that you put on the freezer take it out thaw it out put it back in the freezer repeat the process four or five times let's say that meat has gone bad pretty much i mean it's it's to a point where like you don't take like uh, meat, fish, poultry, whatever it may be, you don't bring it out, come it, thaw it out, bring it back in <laughs> into the freezer, and then thaw it, thaw, it out, thaw it out again. I mean, it would lose its um, consistency and all that stuff, essentially. But it was an interesting concept. I was like wondering, I'm like thinking, like, huh, if there's a way to do that where you can cryogenically freeze the body and the cells and, and then un you know thaw them out and repeat, repeat that process... You have the ability to essentially extend a person's life and live beyond uh, their normal means, of course. I mean, honestly, it's one of the cases where... And the other thing is, by doing that, and waking up every year for one month, I mean, quite honestly, the person can get used to, like, come up to speed with what the prior year was uh, and know what the technology was, etc., basically, and then... Go back to sleep and then follow, you know, catch up with it. It probably takes them a week and that's it. 
or it takes that person a week, basically. I mean, think about it. Let's say a person were to go under and not go under, but chronically freeze themselves in, let's say, the year 1990. Um, and in, you know, and then by 2020, as you see, um, the person will definitely, you know, well, 30 years that would have gone by, of course, in 2020, between 1990 and 2020, 30 years would have gone by. Um, but in those 30 years, if a person was like, let's say the age of 20 uh, in 1990, now realistically, they should be 50 years old. But biologically at that point, um, because of the freezing process and such and their cells, um, and you know, if the whole thing works out, um, they will be about... Actually, I never did the math. Actually, let me do the math for a second. So if that's 30 months, 30 years, uh, 30 years at uh, how many? Wait, I got to pull out my calculator. My math, my head, it's a little late for me, so I'm like off right now. But it's about 360 months, basically. Um, now, in those 360 months, they all have basically, essentially, gone out to, essentially, uh, hold on, give me a second, I'm doing the math incorrectly, give me a second, I gotta pause this, sorry, yeah, um, if you're doing those, um, what I was saying basically is like, in those 30 years, um, you will have aged about biologically speaking, two and a half years. Um, meaning, so you'd be basically close to 23 versus being 50 uh, in those 30 years. And if you'd woken up one month, you know, woken up each year for one month, you'd be pretty much fully aware of the technological advances that have already occurred at that point. And then, of course, the other aspect that I brought uh, an interesting um, concept was how they were talking about um, man's evolution and how uh, from a exponential level from being uh, hunter-gatherers to farmers to agriculturists to industrial revolution to basically uh, flight, space exploration and technology um, within those that time frame everything dropped considerably to the point where, like it shows basically man's evolutionary process that eventually man technologically speaking would become far more advanced than the um than the santi at that point and that was an interesting thing to think of and like i realized like wait hold on that's true um It's, it's another thing to be driven by science, but then there's also the other aspect of to be driven by um, disbelievers of science, per se. Um, I don't want to say religious fanatics, because science and religion can coexist. It can coexist in ways. Um, it's just a matter of how much... Um, naysayers there will be against scientific scientific achievements um people like to alter the facts change facts uh, let's be honest i mean people uh, you know want to spin uh facts truths into lies into their own version basically um and i mean that's where we come down to at this point i mean honestly um, now people are worried about AI. I mean, AI, two years ago, it was compared to now, or three years ago compared to now, massive jump. Um, two years from now, it might be much, much better to the point where like, everyone's jumping into it. Uh, and quantum computing will definitely change a lot of aspects as well, too. Um, that the whole aspect of qubits buying qubits will be a big thing down the line more so than anything else i think um 
But in any case, uh, that's um, on a technical technical level. I'm talking about when it comes to quantum computing with qubits and cloud computing and such. But that's something different altogether at that point. But um, again, it's it's an interesting um, it's, it was an interesting concept. I think I will re- try to download the books, try to read them, um, the the translated version, of course. Uh, maybe also try to ro- watch the Chinese version uh, of the series see some similarities comparisons and see how it works out and like you know probably get ahead of the game with uh you know the actual netflix series um i will say this though um it seems to be trending now back again i mean before easter just before easter um the moses docuseries uh overtook it uh netflix had a problem with that because the fact is, is like they poured a lot of money into this I mean, the thing is, is, Netflix is pouring a lot of money into a lot of this content now that it has to come back and help them. But when I mean help come back and help, I mean being more profitable for them. It has to show the ROI for them. That has to be that return on investment. Uh, because let's put it this way. There are some forms of content that Netflix puts out there that lower budget and they seem to be more popular uh they get more uh, uh they get more views compared to their high budget ones um at one point it was basically netflix was like yeah let's just throw content as much content as possible with the limited budget and see which one sticks and which ones don't i mean uh let's be honest i mean uh house of cards i, I probably wasn't as high of a budget back then as you know, the series progressed. The actors wanted more money. And so, you know, that's where the budget went off to, basically, at that point. Uh, and now some of these ad- adaptations that others are trying to go against. Well, at place in point, with Amazon Prime, basically, what they're doing with, um, uh, not Lord of the Rings, but the prequel to the Lord of the Rings, basically. Uh, not The Hobbit, but um, I forgot the name of the series now. It's, again, it's pretty late for me. I don't know why. It's uh, I'm uh, having a mind for it. Uh, or brain fart, sorry, I should say. <laughs> uh, Amazon. I think it's called uh, Rings of Power. That's what it was, Rings of Power. Um, basically, Amazon put a lot of money into it. Um, it didn't garner as much it garnered some acclaim, but it didn't garner as much popularity that they were hoping for. Uh, and let's be honest, people are trying to go towards the sci-fi fantasy realm now and trying to bring it up because Apple TV seems to understand and know what to do. Um, so does HBO. I think everyone's trying to follow the HBO model because of what they did with Game of Thrones. And how popular it became that everyone wants to go to that fantasy series, but based off the books, basically, and try to get those series in place. I mean, quite honestly, let's put it this way. If Game of Thrones, the the, the book series, was made into a film adaptation versus a series adaptation, TV series adaptation, I don't think it would be as popular, to say the least. I don't think it would have, the, the film adaptation would have done it justice. Um... The real question is, is like if the Lord, let's say the Lord of the Rings trilogy was made into a series instead of the three movies, I don't think, I don't think they could, that would never work from that perspective. It's like you could only extract so much content and information from the books and translate it to, to TV versus the movies themselves. Um... That's why sometimes you have to be careful when it comes to book series and translating them onto film versus translating them onto a TV series. It's it's a double-edged sword, basically. You've got to make sure that you have enough content to create for the TV series. But if you try to make it a film adaptation, you don't want to lose as much of the content. You're trying to cram in as much as you possibly can and cut out some stuff, but you don't want to lose the essence of what the book was that made it so popular. Like Ender's Game. I think Ender's Game should have been, and I, it might come back again. 
that Ender's Game could become, instead of a movie, it might become a TV series. I would not be surprised if Apple, Amazon, maybe Peacock, whatever it may be, they might make it into, one of them might get into a series. Our Paramount Plus, they might make it into a series. It'll be interesting to see how that works out. Uh, but in any case, I'll leave it at that. Uh, let me know your thoughts uh, in the comment section. I do read my comments, as I said, and I do respond to them when they weren't a response. And of course, when I get notified at that point as well, too. Um, I haven't focused a lot on tech lately. I think I will start doing that maybe the following month. I did forget. I didn't forget, I should say. I did not forget about my promise. Um, I think I have like 371 or four. Yeah, 370 or 380 subscribers to this channel i will live stream my steps of 380 steps um similarly to my other channels as well too i'll do the exact same but more so i think what i will do is basically i'll probably take the highest one from one of my other channels tiktok or youtube and just basically stream that with the highest value there with the number of steps i think the highest one i have right now is honestly i think it's between my tiktok and my other youtube channel i think it's like 750 follower subscribers so i'll try it's it's under a thousand so i'll probably do a thousand steps just to show um but as it grows every each month i will probably do the exact same thing if there's more subscribers i'll do those exact number of steps but with that i'll leave it at that um if you like my video like my channel like my content please subscribe if you haven't subscribed uh, and also as i said uh, i will start doing this each month basically where i will live stream the number of steps for the number of subscribers that i have so uh i'll leave it at that um unfiltered unedited and of course always unrehearsed until next time